Today is all about reminding us that we are on assignment. Everybody say we're on assignment. I'm going to kind of get going right off the bat here. So if you're going to get with me, you might want to do it early today. I want to remind you that we've been given a mission from heaven, that there's this mission is more important than anything else that we could possibly be doing. It is an assignment that each and each and every one of us have. What's the assignment you might ask in the gospel of Matthew? Jesus says it this way. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. Jesus is telling us to do more than gather. He's telling us to go. Gathering is important. Gathering is important to do on a weekly basis, but it's never meant to replace going. In Mark chapter 16, Jesus said it this way, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Go into all the world and preach the good news. Here's what I'm trying to help everyone see here this morning. What we do matters. See, God has called us together to get on the mission, to make sure we understand the assignment. Yes, we do gather faithfully. We are supposed to do those things, but we're supposed to be going out into our city and we're supposed to be making disciples. It's not about how many people that we can just pack into this building to make sure maybe we can, we can just shelter them from the evils of this world. No, we are supposed to go out into the world. No, we're going we're gonna to be in it, but not of it. But we're, while we're there, we are going to make disciples. He's called us to action, and that matters. Church isn't just a religious box that we check off every week. So that we can say that we've done the thing that we were supposed to do. No, it, it's a matter of eternity. It's a matter of heaven and hell. Am I talking to somebody today? And people's salvation hangs in the balance of what we do. And we need to be sure that we are awake. We need to be sure that we are active, engaged in to the mission. Why is all of this so important to you, Pastor Jason? Well, I'll tell you why. Because before I'm a pastor... I'm a follower of Jesus, and I've been put on assignment. (laughs) Pastor, now, do you think we have enough people? I mean, isn't there enough people already here at Porva? Aren't you satisfied with what we've got? No, absolutely not, because there are thousands more that need to have what we've experienced in this place. Don't you think we do enough for our community? No, in fact, I think we're just getting started on what we're going to do for this community. Hey, I saw that you sent the van out to pick up kids from the community so you can bring them to church today and you can feed them and make sure they're taken care of. Don't you think that's enough? No, I think that God says he loves the little children and we should bring them to him and make sure that they're taken care of and their needs are important to him so they're important to us as well. Why does our compassion team spend so much time serving people? Because Jesus fed the 5,000 and he said, greater things shall ye do. Listen, he cares for the hungry and so do we. It's part of our assignment. Why do we put so much effort into what we give and taking everything that we, we, we have here and so much of it goes out to missions around the world? Why do you do that? Don't you think that that's enough? Don't you think we should kind of slow down on that? No, absolutely not. Just because we haven't met them doesn't mean that they're not important. Just because we don't see them doesn't mean they're not there. There are people that are hungry across this world and if we have the means to help them in any way, shape, or form, we are going to do it because we're poor of and we're on assignment we're starting to wake up in every literal sense part of getting a vision for something is seeing it everybody say seeing it in other words being fully aware of the need for it if you're taking notes today I want you to write this down when we no longer see the need we lose the vision When we no longer see the need, we lose the vision. If you don't see it, you can ignore it. Pretend like it's not there. Pretend like it's not your responsibility. There was a car accident on Hull Street a few weeks ago, or a few days ago, actually. And my wife and I, we were, and my son, we were headed home. And 
we're cruising down and we're, we're in the right lane there and we don't know until we get really close to it. No, there's an accident. We don't know what lane the accident's in. So we're kind of getting a little closer and closer. We realize the accident's in our lane. So we're saying, okay, we need to start getting over. So, I mean, we're going at like one mile an hour at that point, you know, and we're just kind of cruising along. And I put my blinker on well in advance, you know, I put my blinker on and there's a gap there. And, you know, then you see that gap, and it's kind of promising. You know, when you see those gaps, you're just like, okay, this is feeling pretty good. I might get home tonight. So I see this gap, and then right when I put my blinker on, I got my window down, kind of leaned out. You know, that's kind of the man motion to say I'm kind of getting in, trying to get in here, you know. So I'm over there, kind of leaned out a little bit. I got my blinker on. And then right about that time, that gap, I just see that I'm looking in the rearview mirror or the side view mirror, and I see that he just, he just, you know, speeds up really fast and fills in that gap. You know, he's already, now he went from like one mile an hour to three mile an hour. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he just, just fills in that gap. And so I, I'm, I'm looking out the window at him, you know, like I'm just kind of there. And you know what? I mean, I'm doing what I think. I don't know if Jesus would have done this. But I'm looking out the window. I'm just going like this. Kind of like, come on, man. You know what I mean? I mean, as you know, I wasn't being mean, but I was also showing that I'm just a little disappointed in you, sir. But here's what I think is funny, because as he comes into focus there, as he's coming by, I look over and I see, and I see him and he's just doing this right here. Dead straight. He ain't looking nowhere. And, you know, in that moment. My wife, my wife says something that surprises me because I just was, I, it took me off guard for a second. But she just says, she goes, you know what? I'm impressed. I, she, I was like, what? She goes, you know what? If you're going to be a jerk, do it with confidence and pretend nobody else exists. She says, that's impressive. In John 4, Jesus was talking about talking to a Samaritan woman at the well. And then he turns to his disciples and he says this. He says, don't you have a saying? It's still four months until the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Sometimes we can get in such a hurry and get so focused on our stuff and get to doing our own thing that we don't have time to look around to anybody else's pain, to anybody else's problems. We have, and we got to remember what we talked about a few weeks ago, that if the devil can't derail you, he's just going to speed you up. He's just going to get our life in such a hurry. we got a place we need to be. I don't have time to mess with people that are trying to get over in my lane. I'm just focused straight ahead, and I'm just trying to get there, and ain't nobody else is going to get in my way. And if we're not careful, we walk through our life that way, where there are people in need to our left, there are people in need to our right and we find ourselves so consumed with just getting through our life I need to get home I got some place I need to be I got some business things I need to take care of I got some goals in life I don't have time to be messing with this or that I'm trying to tell somebody today if we open up our eyes we will see that there is a world in need if we'll open up our eyes you'll see that you've got co-workers in need you've got family members in need there are people sitting beside you in need and we get so focused that we don't have time to even look we stare straight ahead because we know if we see it we're going to have to do something about it i'm preaching to us if we see it it's too late now we feel like we got it. you know if that guy would have looked over at me most likely he'd be like all right come on but he knew i gotta stay straight i gotta look straight ahead because if i make eye contact He'll know that I saw him. Now I got to do something. That's what we do. We stay so focused on our life, our problems, our family. I don't have time for anything else. And once you see the deep need, whether you, it's physical or, or spiritual, you have to take actions. And sometimes we'd rather just keep moving. Walking into Old Navy with my son the other day. Yeah, we shop fancy. Woo! Old Navy son. <laughs> it falls apart within like three weeks, but we, we'll be back. 
We're in Old Navy, and uh, we go into Old Navy, and there's like there's the there's some people standing out front from it says YMCA on their little banner, you know, and they're off to the side. And they, I can see them, y'all. I'm I mean I'm looking at them before I even parked. I already I'm already eyeballing that stuff, you know, and I'm just like here we go. I can see it coming. They're talking to people, and I'm walking in. I'm trying. I'm trying not to look. I'm trying. And y'all, I messed up because she was like, sir, sir, sir. You know, and I'm like, the last one, I was like, I need to see if she's talking to me. I knew she was talking. So I look over. Oh, snap. Then messed up now. Now I made eye contact. So she's like, sir, 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 can you come talk to us? I said, I am in a hurry. (laughs) And I, you know, and I was. I was in a hurry to get away from her. I said it real nice, though. That sounded mean. I was real nice. I just said I was in a hurry, you know. And I was like, you know, maybe on the way out, you know, maybe not. <laughs> and I'm trying to get out of there. I don't know what the, you know, the YMCA, I, you know, I believe in a lot of causes. I think there's some good ones. I didn't know if the YMCA was one I needed to, you know, invest in today. But there, that's what we do. We just got to, we, we got a place we got to be. I'm in a hurry. I got stuff I need to do. And every day of our life looks like that if we're not careful. Every day of our life gets to where I got to get to work. After work, I gotta, I gotta get home, I gotta get some food. And after food, I need some me time. And then sleep. And then, oh, I'm off to work again. And then I get off work and I gotta get home and do it again. And by the time we realize that we've gone through 10, 15, 20 years of our life and we kept our head straight the whole way. Okay, well, no, 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 I don't got time. Because I know if I make eye contact, I'm gonna feel something. If I make eye contact, I might have to do something. I'm trying to tell us Jesus is saying here we need to open our eyes and see that the field is ready for us to harvest. The field is ready. People are hurting. People are hungry. We have a job to do. We have an assignment. I want to give you three points today. And for anybody who wants to participate in the harvest you have to apply these three in order to be effective here we are the first one is you have to see the need everybody say see the need need. so Matthew here in Matthew 9 and 36 it says that when he talking about Jesus saw the crowds he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd Some of us need to start praying, God, help me to stop getting angry and frustrated with people around me that don't walk with you. I don't want to get so frustrated with people that don't see the eye eye to eye with me. I don't want to just because I've got my opinions and this and that and and they've got their political views and they've got this and this. I don't want to get so angry with everybody. At some point, I need to see them as sheep without a shepherd. I need to see them the way that you see them. Maybe we need to start asking God to help us see the beneath the bad attitudes and beneath the bad behavior and realize this is a person. This is a soul that will live on for eternity. This is a somebody that's in pain. This is somebody that's under pressure. That's somebody that's confused and hurting. If we could see other people's situations, if we just knew their story. Oh my God, there's a part of it. God, I want him to get, I want the revelation to, to hit us today where there's, there's people beside you that's got a story that would blow your mind. If you only knew this part of being a pastor is I, I hear the stories, I hear the in-depth stuff, and I think to myself when they leave the office or I leave a, a conversation with them and I'm thinking the people beside them on Sunday have no idea what they were dealing with this week. They have no idea the depths of the pain that they've gone through in their life or that the, 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 the struggle that they may be in. And if we're not careful, we don't know that about the person sitting next to us, let alone the person we work with, let alone the person we interact with in some business somewhere. I'm trying to let us know today that if we see like Jesus sees, we'll see people that are hungry. We'll see people that are like sheep without a shepherd, and not just some, some person that you disagree with. Everybody say, we're on assignment. assignment. Second, we need to feel the urgency. In John chapter 9, Jesus said, as long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. This is not a statement of fear. It's a statement of urgency. It's a realistic assessment of the fact that we don't have forever to complete our assignment. 
This is not something we get to put off and just do whenever we feel like it. It's not something that Jesus says, okay, I hope they get around to it someday. He's trying to let us know that we have a work to do and we must get to it quickly. We have a window of time to be about our Father's business. Here's a way, and I want you to write this one down if you're taking notes. Here's a way to gauge if our eyes are open and if we have a sense of urgency. Are you ready? If God answered every one of your prayers, would it change the world or just your world? If God answered everything that you've been asking him lately, would it change the world? Would it impact our city? Or would you just have more in your bank account? If God answered all of your prayers, would it be that just some, you'd have more good things in your life and things would kind of work out for you and your family, your four and no more, or would the world be changed? The question is this, do we have a sense of urgency? Because if we did, we would realize that we've got more work to do than just our own family. We've got more work to do than just, just our own home. We've got more work to do than just this building here and the people are in it. We have an urgency about us that says, God, I've got a mission. I've got an assignment. I've got my prayers need to be focused on more than just me. My life needs to be focused on more than just me. I've got to reach those that are hungry. And finally, we have to prepare the sacrifice. Last week, I, I taught that there was three dimensions of giving. We covered the first two, and it was spontaneous giving. That's the emotions, emotional giving. That's kind of feeling-based. It's not a bad thing. It's certainly, there's a place for it where you just kind of feel in that moment, I kind of want to give, and, and those are good things. Number two is strategic giving, and that is that is pre-planned giving. That's where we do our tithing. That's where we plan and budget in advance. This is what we're going to do with this giving. That's strategic giving. Number three is sacrificial giving. And that is giving to the degree that it hurts. I was telling the ministers today, it's just kind of a, that's that feeling where you get a little nauseated. If you don't get a little nauseated with it, it, it probably ain't sacrifice. You know what I mean? It's just... If it's a little too easy, it certainly ain't sacrifice. That's just something we can do. And it's not too, you know, we're not to think too hard about it. But I'm trying to tell you there is another level of giving, and that is sacrificial giving. So let me introduce this one by saying this. True love happens outside of the comfort zones. True love happens outside of the comfort zones. Now, all you newlyweds don't know nothing about this yet. But love isn't a feeling. It's putting their needs ahead of your own. Their needs ahead of your own. It's selfless. M men, love is turning off the game and watching a Christmas Hallmark in September. <laughs> it's like, man. I mean, sickness and in health, but not this. <laughs> but that's love. That's sacrifice. Ladies. Love is letting them have control of the thermostat, even though you're wearing three Snuggies and a bear rug. You're like, I'm so cold. But he's, okay, we'll let them have the one thing, the thermostat. Somebody, somebody got excited. Somebody got the Holy Ghost right there. <laughs> Listen, if your relationship is always comfortable, that just means you are being loved and you're not the one loving. Love is action and action takes sacrifice. If you're comfortable in that relationship for too long, you know what that means? Somebody's serving you and you're not the doing the one serving. Serving and sacrifice is uncomfortable. It's doing stuff you don't feel like doing all the time. It's doing something because you know it's just not something I enjoy, but I'm going to do it because I know the person I love is benefited by it. They're seeing, seeing the vision is free. free to, it's free to talk about it. It's free to get excited about it. It's free to pray about it. But loving God and loving soul needs seeds of sacrifice. There are two benefits of sacrificial giving. I'm going to go through the first one with you. Here we go. Number one, it builds your faith. It builds your faith. As a parent, the, my son rarely likes what's best for him. And he just, uh, that's kind of a normal thing. I think most parents understand that. If, you, if it's good for you, 
it's usually the thing you don't like to do. You know what I'm saying? And I think most of us kind of identify with that even as adults. We don't really grow out of that. If it's the right thing, it's sometimes the hard thing. A lot of times the hard thing. But of course, that's just kind of the way it works. But God's like, listen, I, I want you to grow. And, I want, and, 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 and we're like, I, I don't know. I, you know, this, this ain't fun. I'm not really excited about this whole growth process. I like, I want to grow, but I just want you to pick on somebody else for a while. And he's saying, I just want what's best for you. I just want what you, what, just like we are with our children, I just want what's best for you. I'm not asking for this for you. I didn't ask for my son to do this or that for me. No, I want what's best for him. And I think every one of us feel the same way. At some point, we're just saying, I want what's best for my family in the long run. And Jesus is so much more than us in the ways of love for us than we are even our own family. And he's saying, I just want what's best for my kids. So you really want me to fast, God? I mean, fasting, come on, of all things. And he said, yeah, because it makes you a better you. You want me to, you want me to read my Bible? I mean, come on. How does that benefit God for you reading your Bible? How does that benefit him? It doesn't. It benefits you. It's for you. If there's a revelation that has to happen, you were saying, he's saying, pray. I want you to pray. And we preach, pray and pray and pray. And somebody in this room has been confused because it's almost like we're wondering, God, are you lonely? Is that why we need to pray? You, you just, you really need somebody to talk to? Is that, he says, no, it's not for me. Prayer is for you. Everything that he asks of us is for you. It's to grow your faith. It's to build you in your walk with him. It's not about him. It's not about me. It's about you doing what you need to do to get closer to him. So somebody needs a revelation today that it's, it's all about what's best for you in the long run. And he wants us full of faith. He wants us full of promise. He wants us full of purpose. And he wants us to wake up and be mission minded. I want you to hear this because some of you, and this is a revelation I, I got this week, and I, I, hope you, I hope you understand what I'm going to tell you. God's already, somebody's saying, oh God, God, I've already committed to be a faithful tither, and I already go to church, and I already try to live a good life. So we ask, God, what more do you want from me? <sighs> oh, this is good. Oh, it's gonna take, and you ain't going to get it all at first. That's okay. But God is saying, he flipped it around and he's saying, no, 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 no. The question is, what more do you want from me? Huh. All right, listen, here, I'm going to show you some stuff here. I got, I'm getting my help. Come on, I got some help coming. I was coming from the Lord, but I got some help coming from the back too. Here we go. Look at this. All right. So here we go. All right. All right let, me get, let me get a little bit of starting out here. I was, let me, yeah, they'll go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right, so I got a little bit, just get a little bit more, you know, come on, hallelujah. There we go, that's good right there. All right, is this stuff safe to drink? All right. So here I got, I got, I got, I got my blessing, you know what I'm saying? I got, I got my income, I got what it is that I, that, that's, that's just, it's just, it's just what I've, 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 I've given, I'm going to go ahead and give my tithes, go ahead and give my tithes. All right, I've given my tithes. Here, all right, so I've given my tithes, I've given that 10%, and then here, this is, this is mine. I want to make sure that understand everybody gets it. This is this belongs to me. I've already returned to God what belongs to Him. Everything, every, every bit of this is mine. There is zero obligation other than giving some offering. Then how much? You don't it doesn't determine. So I could give, I could give just, you know, just a little bit of offering, just, you know, just a dab. That's fine. There's no obligation. God is not asking any all of this from you. Just want to make this is very clear, okay? And I, this is, you have to understand this for today's message as well. There's none of this is saying, here, as a Christian, just, just give everything you've got. Now, they did that. In the New Testament, they sold literally everything they had. That's how the revival happened is because they sold everything and put it at the feet of the disciples and then of the apostles, and the apostles then distributed it to make sure that, that revival happened. But I ain't asking for that, so don't worry. <laughs> I am saying it's up to you. To decide, okay? It really belongs to you. No pressure, no obligation. Very important you understand. All right, now, so what I gotta do is I'm saying, okay, God, I gotta, 
I mean, I got to pay. I got my bills to pay. I got other things to do. I don't have a lot left. Look at that. There's a lot of us going to identify with this. I don't have a whole lot left. I mean, I got things I'm doing. And there's a, there's a point where we're saying in a sacrificial, sacrificial service like this, I want you to get it. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and say, God, all right, it's mine. He said, no obligation, no problem. And this is completely good to just say, all right, Lord, here's a, here's a sacrifice. I'm going to do it. I'm going to give something. I didn't, you know, wouldn't allow, I'm going to make sure I got, I mean, I got, I got bills to pay. I got stuff I got to do. All right. Every one of us have been there. And then well, what Jesus says, is, I will never be, I'll never be in debt to any man. So what he did right after that, he just, he says, okay, make sure you get that back. Cause I don't, you know, I, whatever it is that you've given, the measure you're given, is going to be a measure in return. You understand? All right. So what I'm trying to explain to somebody today is somebody saying, God, what more do you want from me? I've already doing all this, all that. He says, no, 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 no. I'm not asking all that. Here's the question for you. What more do you want from me? Because you want more from me. Then we start to find out that we say, God, you know what? I do need to, I got to take care of this. I got to take care of that. But you know what? I would like to have a blessing in my life. I would like to have your hand of favor on my life. And we start to find that we say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step out in faith and I'm going to truly sacrifice. And watch this. Watch this. He says, I got more than you could handle. Whatever it is that you need, he says, you, got, you need more? Here, I can pay my bills. I can take care of this. God, I've seen the needs for mission. I got needs for, I want to see other things I want to sacrifice. He says, oh, keep it coming. Keep it coming. I got more than you can handle. Everything that you want is in me. Everything you need is in me. He said, just keep it coming. Whatever it is that you need, God says, I've got more than you ever could imagine. The question is, is not... God, what more do you want from me? He said, no, no, no. I don't require anything other than what we talked about last week. I don't require that. It's all yours. The question is today, what more do you want from God? What is it that you would like to have from God? And the more you say, God, I'll pour out. I promise you this. He says, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I can do anything in, above and beyond your greatest imagination. But you must have to learn to trust me. And watch and see me do the rest. Thank you. I made a mess. Did your arms get tired, brother? I was worried about that. So when it comes to God, it's never about your money. It was never about praying because he wants to talk to you because, or he needs to talk to you. He needs to talk to somebody. It was never about fasting because of some reason that he needs. Everything he does is for you. Everything he does is because he wants what's best for his kids. There's not someone in this room that doesn't want, your, doesn't want your kid to be successful. There's not a person in this room that doesn't want your child to grow and to do great things. That's exactly the way it is with God. He's saying, it's about my children. He says, once they open up their heart, he says, and then I can trust them. And then in that moment is when he says, I'm ready to open up the floodgates. Huh. Can I tell you what I saw this week? Because somebody come get this bowl. I'm going to trip over it right in the middle of the, uh, while I'm preaching. No, they're, they're back there. They'll come get it. So can I, can, I, can I tell you what I saw? I saw this this week. The floodgates, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're like a water dam, okay? All right? And it's like, a, it's, it's like a door that would open up that would allow water to flood a particular area so it would hold back. That's the way it was in the old days. That's the way, I mean, in the Bible time, and that's the way it is even today. It's this large uh, door that would hold back this large amount of water. But I want you to get this. The water isn't the blessing. Ah, God, open up the floodgates. I'm ready for the water. The water, the water isn't the blessing. It's what the water does. See, when we walk into a certain level of faith, when we pass that test of trust, that's when the floodgates open up and then your dry valley begins to flood. And then and only then those dry seeds begin to take life. And all those seeds that you've been sowing, the seeds that you thought that God even forgot about, the seeds that you've been planting over time. He says, when I open up the floodgates, the water begins to rush in and every seed that you've ever planted begins to get water and that water makes that seed begin to sprout and then the blessing comes the blessing wasn't in the water the blessing is in the seed (laughs) 
God, I, some of you, you're saying, you know, because I don't, I don't see where the blessing's coming from, I, it's hard for me to believe. I got to get you, you got to understand this today. Some of you are saying, I don't know where it's going to happen because my job, I'm not up for a raise right now. My wife's job is kind of locked in where she's kind of plateaued. She's not going to be able to elevate. I want to sow a seed of faith, but I don't know where it will come from because I don't physically see how it could happen. Now, I want to get a couple nods that some of you have ever been where I just said. Okay, I know the whole room has, so that's okay. God, I don't know. It's hard for me to imagine what you're going to do. So we limit God on what we think our, our faith is limited by what we can see. So instead of giving with expectation, we give what we can afford to lose. Oh, because I can't see where it's coming from. I don't give with an expectation that, it, that God is going to d overflow my, my vessel, overflow my life with blessing. I don't, I don't give with that expectation. I just give that I'm going to give what I can lose just in case it doesn't happen. I'm still safe. I, I, you know, I'm preaching. I want to stoke the fire of somebody's expectation today. Don't let your imagination limit what God can do. He's not limited by your job's pay scale. There's no box big enough to fit God into. There's nothing that you can do to say, God, you can have to fit within this and do that and do over here. I'm trying to encourage somebody today to let the creator get creative in your life. If you don't know where the blessing is going to come from, you say, good, God, then just be creative and do it however you feel like doing it. I don't know if there's very many people in the room that ever had any other time in their life where you said, God, you know what? I don't know where it came from, but a check came in the mail. I don't know where it came from, but God, you gave me a blessing. I had talked to somebody this week they say I wasn't even up for a raise and all of a sudden after last week after we did the whole tithing service recommitted to tithes I got a raise the very next day I don't know how God's going to do it but I assure you he will do it the second benefit of sacrificial sowing is this it builds the kingdom everybody said it builds the kingdom 36 years ago God gave us our first building, which is our now Planet Kids. 29 years ago, God gave us this incredible building that we are in right now. I'm happy about that. We all know that this is God's house, but it's kind of our house too. You know, when I would live with my parents when I was young, it wasn't like, you know, I'm going to go and tell my friends, you want to come over to my parents' house? You know what I'm saying? It was my house. It's where we live. That's kind of our house too here today. I gotta tell you something. I'm pretty proud of this house. I'm pretty happy about this place. I like this place a lot. I hope you did some stretching because I'm gonna get you to do something with me for a second here. If this fits you, I want you to I want you to stand and I want you to remain standing until we're done, okay? If it fits you. And if more than one fits you, then like maybe raise one hand, then maybe the other hand, then like fingers and then toes, okay? But here's what, you ready? You guys ready? We need to like pop them all, but you're going to have to like stay up instead of sit back down. All right, you ready? Here it is. If you were baptized in this house, I want you to stand. If you were baptized on this property, I want you to stand. <laughs> If your children were baptized here, I want you to stand. If you received the gift of the Holy Ghost here, I want you to stand. If your children received the gift of the Holy Ghost here, I want you to stand. If God healed your body here, I want you to stand. If God healed your heart here, I want you to stand. If God delivered you from an addiction in this house, I want you to stand. If you found peace in this house, I want you to stand. If you found purpose in this house, I want you to stand. If you found the family that loves you in this house, I want you to stand. If your life was changed by the preached word in this house, I want you to stand. I want you to see that God has done something great in this place. Everyone here, God has been blessing and overflowing continually, but it's happened in this house.
Are you thankful for the house of the Lord here today? You may be seated. Listen, I know the church isn't a building. The church is you and I. But there's something special about this place. This is a lighthouse to the city. It's a beacon of hope. It's a monument to Jesus Christ. Listen, I've seen angels in this room. You can never take that away from me because I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen as a glory cloud has hovered over this place. I've seen like a river of the Holy Ghost flowing through here. You're not never ever going to tell me that this place is some ordinary just building. This is God's house. He moves here. He moves in a mighty way in every one of us in this house. It's been set apart as holy unto the Lord. It ain't the time for it, but that's why I'm not a big fan of, you know, kids playing and jumping over stuff and running and things in this house. I was taught at an early age, this is God's house. It's not a gymnasium. There's something special about this place. To me, this is more than a building. It's where my soul is fed. It's where my strength is renewed. It's where my family can worship alongside your family. It's where my kids can experience the power of God. It's where every nation and tribe can worship together, no matter the background or their skin color. We can come in here unified. They might be disunity, but disunity out, out there, out there. They may be doing all kinds of other rubbish out there. They may be hating on each other out there. But in this place, we come together. We lock arms and say, we are headed to heaven together. We're going going someplace together. We've got a promise and a purpose and it doesn't matter what we look like or where we came from. Somebody thankful for this house today. This is the mother to many ministries. This place. It's the mother. Callings are birthed in this place. Giftings are discovered in this place. Burdens are born in this place and I'm thankful for that I'm thankful for what we've got I'm thankful for what the Lord's doing but I'm going to tell you this I'm not satisfied we have a mission to share the love of Jesus with everyone that we can we can't just gather we have to go I'm not satisfied with just seeing your face, even though I love it more than just about anything in this world, seeing you on a weekly basis. But I promise you this, I'm not satisfied with just who we've got in this building today. Why? Because we've got a mission. We've got a calling. There's people that are hungry and we have to reach it. This is why we've got some big plans for our community kids this year. Because of your faithful giving, in 2024, we are going to do more than ever to meet the needs of the precious, poverty-stricken children of our city. We will find them. We will reach them. i got to tell you, I really believe it sometimes. I just see Jesus pushing people out of the way. I'll get to you in just a minute. I'll get to you. Give me, give, come here, kids. Come here, kids. That's what I think he would do. I want you to understand it's important to me. It's important to this church to reach the kids of our city. They're hungry. They don't have a choice. They don't know better. They just know they're hungry for food and they're hungry for the love of God. And we're going to provide both. I, that should get you a little more excited than it did. I, I don't know. <laughs> Serving the needs of our children of our city should get us a little more excited than a golf clap. This year, with your support, our Compassion Team will feed more families in our community than ever before. We've partnered with organizations like The Waymaker, which can buy food and serves meals to those that are hungry. Why? Because we care. Why? Because if they're, if they're hungry, I'm not going to ignore them. If we just because they, 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 they don't live next to us and we don't see them on a daily basis, it doesn't mean they're not there. They're in our community and we're going to take care of them and we're going to supply whatever need we can. We already financially support them on a regular basis. We already give and we already feed. We already do those things. But I'm trying to tell you we're ramping up every one of these areas. Why? Because there's a need and we're on assignment. Soon I'm going to tell you about another organization that we're going to be partner with, partnering with financially. They are focusing on rescuing victims of human trafficking. Amen. 
Jesus cares about that kind of stuff. Hey, it ain't just about winning their soul, winning, their, winning them to Jesus and disciple them right away. Some of them just need to be saved out of torture. Some of them need to be saved out of abuse. And if you think that's not important to him, you're wrong. It's important to him and it's important to us. I refuse to keep our head down and just not see the needs around us. This church supports missions efforts all over the world. We got a whole, a whole time of the year that we focus and kind of and, and, and make this a big push and make all the announcements and we'll do all that stuff later in the year. But we try to we try to keep you up to date in the meantime. But we're doing things all over the world that would blow your mind. I even tell I told Bishop Reese I said Bishop uh, uh, Sister Forbes I said I don't know guys. I don't even know if you could tell them all that stuff because it's so great and so amazing that I feel like it actually almost feels like it's not real to some people. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we need to tone it down some just so people would actually believe that it's happening because it is happening. We are in communication with him. He communicates with him every week. God is changing lives all around the world. It's so big and so grand that I'm not even sure some of our faith even can imagine what's happening. It's because of this church. I am proud to tell you today that over the years, this church has given well over $1 million to missions. That's lives being changed. That's people being physically fed and spiritually fed. That's our church. That's you and me. to tell you over and over I don't care about this place being the Taj Mahal I don't care about big old crystal chandeliers hanging I don't I don't that none of that stuff impresses me all we got to do is just make sure we have a representable place something that people can come in and enjoy themselves and look at it and be be comfortable and nice for your neighbors and your friends but other than that let's send it let's send it let's go with it let's do things great with it let's do something outside of this building let's do something outside of our four walls of our own home and our four walls of our church let Let's make a difference in this world. The Lord has given me a missions vision for our church, and I'm going to share that later this year, and I'm excited about it. But I, 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 wanted, I want to remind you that we have to be good stewards of what we've got. It's your generosity and sacrifice that, that allows us to keep the mother church healthy. You understand that nothing, not all, everything we do relies on this place being healthy. You know, I mean, it just doesn't work if this gets dysfunctional. It doesn't work if we just start getting selfish around here and don't do what we need to do. It doesn't work if this building starts, physical building starts falling apart and we don't have a place to meet and things start, and we get behind on this or that. None of it works. This has to be healthy. If mama ain't healthy, ain't nobody healthy. If mama ain't happy, nobody happy. Mama needs to be healthy, and that's what we're focused on today. Anybody ever owned a home that's, 30 years plus old, raise your hand, I wanna see. We got some people, yeah, yeah. And you know, you gotta stay on top of that. I know, I know, y'all, my, my house is four years old. I already had to replace part of the roof. <laughs> Come on. Man. It just works, it's, it's, it's hard. I'm gonna tell you something you might not know, that commercial buildings age in dog years. Okay, I want you to keep in mind this. Over 4,000 people are in and out of this this facility every month. 4,000 people are in and out of this facility every month. If you're like, you're thinking to yourself, man, you know what? That dumb toilet's not working at the house, stupid thing, whatever. Just imagine 4,000 people using the facilities here. 4,000 times, or 4,000 people uh, uh, absorbing what the, the atmosphere here to where we're in the seats and we're on the, we're on the, uh, on the carpet and the air conditioners. We got, I think I, it was 16 air conditioners here that, that are like, you know, a 10 ton units, big thing. All of that stuff is used on a regular basis. I'm trying to tell you we have to keep the mother healthy to make sure this place stays in good good order. We have to take care of what God has given us. He's blessed us with this house and we've got to take care of it. And we have been. I, uh, I'm happy to tell you that next month we're planning on starting the renovation of our worship center bathrooms. We've been talking about it. It's time. Yeah. 
You know how you, you, you know, even in our own house, you know how you're like, not until like a, a, somebody comes over, do you realize, wait a second, man, I should have, that should have been painted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we don't even see it because it's been happening all the time. Or we just like take a piece of furniture and cover a hole in the wall, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, we've got some of that going on around here, and we're going to make sure and update everything we can to make sure we're ready for this next wave of revival. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of cars pass this place on a regular basis all the time. And guess what? Every last one of them judges a book by its cover. Every one of them. I got some good news for you, something pretty cool. We're going to make sure that all three buildings are they, they're cohesive, they work together, and we're going to put a, a, a different facade on the front to make sure that they all are updated to where each building all looks like they were built at the same time, not different decades and different things. We're going to make sure this place is from the highway. People look at it and say something good is happening there. I don't know if the county is going to let us do this part yet, but I'm hoping they will. I'm hoping right across that back wall right there, as big as we can get it, Porva.Church. I want the whole everybody to say, when they come out, like, oh, what's going on up there? I want people to see what's happening here. We want to modernize the buildings. We want to make that happen. But, but, but with your help, we're going to be able to improve some areas of our family center and our Planet Kids facility. Planet Kids has seen huge growth in 2024. That place is, is going to be overflowing here any day now. It's, it's incredible to see what God is doing over there. Our Spanish ministry, which meets in the family center, they're, going to have, they're, they're having to order more chairs this week because they're almost wall to wall. Every part of that building is getting packed. So three and a half years ago, they had 30 some people. They're averaging 170 every week right now. We're packing out that place. I'm trying to tell you these aren't just buildings. Are you getting that? They're not just buildings. They're not just some sort of brick and mortar. This is more than that. They're soul saving stations. Uh, revival is happening here. Poor, but we're in a reaping season. It's already begun. I don't know if you know it or not. I hope you see it. What's happening around you. We're in a reaping season. And, and, and when we're growing faster than we've ever grown before. Things are happening in, a, in an incredibly fast rate. Last year, I already told you, but we had a 130% increase in first-time guests. We had 651 new people that came through our doors. 130% increase in one year. We, we needed, with that said, we need a designated training space to properly disciple these people. I, I, you know, if I could walk everybody around and I could do a tour and I could show you what we're up against, we are at real constraints when it comes to space here. Okay? So this place is absolutely packed on Sunday packed to the max in all kinds of different places of the building. And with your sacrifice today, what you sacrifice and what you commit to sacrifice in this service, we are going to convert the upstairs storage area in the family center into a large, fully furnished training room, a designated space where people can be discipled and grow in their gifting. There's going to be a kitchenette in there. Why? Because we know it's easier to get discipled when you've got some breakfast in your stomach. We are going to take care of that area to make sure it is a designated training area, not just for all the news folks that are coming in, but ministry training will happen in there. There will be all kinds of other types of training uh, that will happen in that room. But we've needed it for so long. We're saying, God, what are we going to do? And I said, okay, it's time to bite the bullet. We need to start making some expansion. We need to start making some renovations. We need to start doing it. Why? Because we need the space. So right now it's our storage area. We've got all kinds of storage up there. There's tons of stuff. I mean, we need, it's not junk. We keep it clean. We keep, you know, keep all the junk out of there, but it's stuff we need. Well, we got to put that somewhere. So with your sacrifice today, we're going to buy, we're going to build a shed, a large shed, and like, not just like a little tiny stuff. We've got to build a large storage facility on the property here to make sure that we can put all that so then we can make that storage or that training facility. <clears throat> Do you guys enjoy our newly expanded paved parking? Yeah. I know I'm if y'all if y'all don't know yet, I didn't start with the best stuff. I'm getting there. Well, we like to pave parking. Well, apparently, word got out what's going on around here that God's doing a work. I'm going to show you this is a picture of our parking lot a few weeks ago. I don't know if you see here. It's packed out. Okay. 
We, we have to make room for more people. We have to do what, whatever it takes. I, you, know, some, you know, our parking team does an incredible job, but we're out of space, okay? So, so, so what now? Do we tell the community, guys, we just don't have any room for you? You know, like there's no vacancy. Y'all need to go find another church. You know, there's no way to do it. No, what do we do? We expand. We do whatever it takes. We've got, we've got area. We'll have to do a work over here to this left side, up here on the hill. That's not a safe parking area. And you can see there, there's the different odd things happening. But we got to, we got to really work through all that. We have to work through all this. We're going to try to pave this. We're going to try to make sure this is all safe with particular parking spaces. All of that is going to take a lot of heavy machinery and a lot and a, and a chunk of change to make it happen. And if you don't think it's expensive, you've never done construction. But this is going to be work. What I'm trying to say is somebody told me a few weeks ago, they said, I, I have to come in late because of a, a, a situation where I, have to, I, I can't get there until X amount of time. And every time I'm here, there is no place to park. It's just you can't really find a spot. And I'm saying there's no way I'm going to tell my neighbor that if you don't get there by a certain time, I'm sorry, you might as well park up at Raceway Gas Station because we can't fit you here. No, we're going to make room for this place. We're going to make sure that people have a place to park. We're going to make sure that they're taken care of. Well, Pastor Jason, we're running out of space here. What are we going to do? I know I get that question a lot. I'll tell you this. We're building, part of what you're going to be doing today is helping us to build a fund that as soon as one of these houses comes available near us, we're going to be ready to purchase it so we can blow that place up if we need to, and we're going to make sure that this place is ready to expand. We need to get as much of this property as possible because God is building it. I, y'all, Some of y'all... Are satisfied? Are you kind of just thinking this is kind of nice the way it is? No, if there's 600 or so that might be here on a Sunday, I'm trying to tell you there's going to be 1,200 in no time. What God is going to do? You're saying I don't know how He's going to do it. I don't care. I'm not boxing God in. I don't know how He's going to take care of it. I don't know where it's all going to come from. I'm saying I want to be ready when it happens. I want to make sure I'm sowing the seeds of faith in advance, so as soon as He opens a door, we're ready to jump. Pastor Jason, what's your, I mean, <clears throat> that sounds like down the road. What is, what's your immediate plans? Well, I am happy to tell you that we have a multifaceted plan for expansion. We don't have all our eggs in one basket. So I am very happy to tell you today and announce one of those plans. In September 2024, we will launch phase one of our second campus. a city to reach we're on assignment I'm trying to tell you 2200 Pickens Road will not fit us forever we could try to buy as many houses as we can buy I'm trying to tell you we're gonna have to go to them we're gonna find them we're gonna have campuses all over this city you'll be able to tell your friends oh oh you don't have to drive over here you got a campus right near where you live you got a campus over near your work God is going to provide and make sure that this city is ready for the harvest Hear me, church, when the floodgates open, all the seeds get wet. The musicians will come. If the seed, if, when the floodgates open, he's trying to let you know every seed of prayer that you've been praying is going to get wet. It's not just the seeds of, of financial sacrifice. He's trying to say that once your faith is expanded, once that, that floodgate is open, somebody in this room needs to picture their child coming to the altar for the first time in a long time. Somebody in this room needs to picture saying, God, I, I'm ready for that seed that I've been praying for my husband to come back to you. Somebody needs to picture your husband kneeling down before him, crying before God. Somebody needs to picture healing in your body because because you've been sowing seeds of faith in that direction. I'm trying to let somebody know today, reaping season is reaping season. It's not just reaping in money. It's not just reaping in financial blessing. I'm trying to tell somebody, when you sow faith, when you believe and trust in God, you need to start imagining that all the seeds get wet. I told you, I told you God was taking me on a faith journey this year. And in prayer for this service, he spoke to me 
an amount for my wife and I to give. I, I, you know, I, I said, okay, now hold on, God. I know that can't be you. That's pain. That, that hurts. Y'all, I got sick to my stomach. I told the minister today, I said, man, that nauseated feeling, the reason I had that on my mind because I got nauseated when he told me. I said, well, God, listen, God, I can't, we can't afford that. Then he spoke this back to me. I heard it almost instantly. If you can afford it, it's not sacrifice. If you can afford it, it's not sacrifice. And then I heard him ask this question. That's why I built part of the sermon on it. What more do you want from me? And I said, God, I'm so thankful for what you've given my family. I'm so thankful for your blessing. But am I allowed God to say this? I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied for where we're at. I'm not satisfied for everything we've got because I know that you've got more for me. You've got more for my family. You've got more for this church. And I said, God, if you've called on me to give a sacrifice that gives me great pain to give, I said, God, okay. I'm ready for more from you. If you can trust me with what I can sacrifice, I trust you that you're going to take care of everything that I could possibly imagine and even more. I'm asking the ushers to start handing out cards now. You're going to get some cards. You don't need to feel pressure. I already told you everything that's in that cup belongs to you. I am telling you. That somebody wants to stretch your faith today and somebody says, I, I want to sow into the vision that we've been talking about, but I also, I also believe that the Lord is going to return to me much more than I ever could imagine.